In this video, presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to be doing the third and final part of our user-submitted question on concavity. This question gives us f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x and asks us to find the asymptotes and the intervals that's increasing, decreasing, the extrema, local and globally, and uh, the inflection points and so on and so forth, our general, well-rounded, full functional analysis. So, um, because we've had lots of practice with derivatives, I didn't write those out, or I didn't, I'm not solving them, I already wrote them out for us. So let's dive right into this. For starters, if you take a look at the function, because we have the 1 over x, if we have x equal to 0, we're going to get a 0 in the denominator of this term, which is undefined. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 to start out with. So that's a start there. And additionally, it would be nice to know the points where this crosses a graph. So let's set this equal to 0 and see if we can come up with a solution. This should be equal to x squared equals 1 over x. So x to the third equals 1. So this is only going to occur at x equals 1. We'll have a 0. And actually, that makes sense. 1 squared minus 1 over 1 is equal to 0. Fantastic. We'll clear up a little bit of room here. And now that we've analyzed the function, let's analyze the first derivative. Just like in every other problem, we're going to want to set this equal to 0 and solve to determine where our critical points are. So this is going to be 2x is equal to negative 1 over x squared. So 2x to the third equals negative 1, or x to the third equals negative 1 half. So x equals the third root of negative 1 half. So our critical point, we only have 1, is the third root of negative 1 half. Oh, and that's going to be a negative number that is slightly, well, slightly more negative than one-half. I would say that would be close to about negative 0 0.9 if I had to take a guess without doing any calculations. So I'm going to draw something there for our inflection point. Now we need to set up the interval to determine whether we're increasing or decreasing on this. So we'll do negative infinity to the, th oh, yeah, the third root of negative one-half. And from the third root to positive infinity. That doesn't look anything like it. Neither does that. Positive infinity. So we'll take negative one and we'll take positive 1. Notice we can't use 0 because we're undefined at that point. We have a vertical asymptote. So our first derivative, we have 2 times negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 squared. This is going to equal negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. So we have a negative number. We're decreasing along that part of the interval. Now we can solve the same problem using positive 1. This will be 2 times 1 plus 1 over 1 squared. And I think you can convince yourself that that's equal to positive 3 pretty easily. So now not only do we know that we have a critical point at the third root of negative 1 half, we know we're going to be decreasing everywhere before that and we'll be increasing everywhere after that. So that's everything we need to know from the first derivative. Now let's go on and let's analyze the second derivative to see what information we can pull out of that. We'll set that equal to 0 as well. And we're going to get 2 is equal to positive 2 over x to the third. So this will be x to the third is equal to 1. That's dividing out the 2's, of course. So this will occur, we'll have an inflection point 
at positive 1, x equals 1, which, interesting enough, is right where we cross the axis. So, we're going to be, oh, sorry, I forgot to set up the interval. We need to do negative infinity to 1, and then 1 to infinity, positive infinity, in our second derivative. So let's take negative 1 and positive 2 as our example. So f double prime of negative 1 is equal to 2 minus 2 over negative 1 to the third. This is still going to be equal to 1. The negatives will cancel. So this will be 2 plus 2. This will be positive. So we got concave up on that interval. And then if we put in positive 2, this will be equal to 2 minus 2 over 2 to the third. So this will be 2 minus 2 over 8, or 1 fourth. And this is going to be equal to positive, well, it'll be positive. That doesn't strike me as right. Let me check that really quick. All right, I've checked my results, and I did, in fact, make a mistake. What I forgot, when you're doing your second derivative test, wherever you have an asymptote, you need to put that into our interval there. So what I had is from negative infinity to 1 and then 1 to positive infinity. I needed to stop at 0 and take a test value here. So let's do that. Well, let's use positive 1 half. So this is going to give us 2 minus 2 over 1 half to the third power. This is going to be 2 minus 2 over an eighth, which is going to be 2 minus 2 times 8, which is going to be very strongly negative. And uh, I just saw that, have that there. I forgot to copy that incorrectly when I made the change. All right, so now we have our inflection point occurs at 1. And we know that we're decreasing from 0 to, or we're concave down from 0 to positive 1, and we're concave up from 1 to positive infinity. So we know where we cross the x-axis, we know where we're decreasing, we know where we're increasing, so this gives us something that we can sketch the graph with finally. Taking our decreasing and the fact that we're concave up, and then we start increasing until we get to zero. I'm going to say that this will look something like this. We're decreasing until we got to the third roots of negative one third. We start increasing after that, and we have an uh, and we have a, a con we're concave up. We're curving up. So in that case, we know that we have to have a minimum at negative one-half to the third root. And then after this, we're going to be increasing for this interval, but we have to come from negative infinity, and we're doing this with the down curvature. And then at when we get to x equals 1, we have an inflection point, so we switch to an upwards curvature, but we stay increasing. So if you t take a look at the white here, this is what our graph looks like. And in fact, I have checked this on the calculator, so we've got it quite good. So that takes care of this particular question on concavities. No, I struggled through it a little bit, but you know, we got it there just the same.